Now we're gonna move on to something that a lot of us struggle with, how to find trusted information. Dr. Richard Wassersuck earned his PhD in evolutionary biology, earning an IG Nobel Prize for his study on the comparative palatability of tadpoles in Costa Rica, whatever that means. After being diagnosed with prostate cancer, Richard turned his research interest toward the psychology of prostate cancer. He's now the co-lead of the National ADT Educational Program and the lead author on the book, Androgen Deprivation Therapy, an essential guide for prostate cancer patients and their loved ones. Welcome, Richard. Oh, uh, thank you, and I am unmuted, I believe. You can hear me. Um, I'm going to try to share my screen. Uh, that's not the screen I'm looking for. The screen I'm looking for is my PowerPoint presentation. And uh, can I move this screen and see my PowerPoint presentation? Hum, 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 hum. Okay, it's not working. Um, maybe I'm missing something here. Share. Let's try hitting share. And let's close that. I am sorry about this. Um, hit PowerPoint. And uh, live transcript, close caption. Close that. Close that. Hit that. And that's the end of my slides. Let's go to the beginning. I'm sorry for these delays. Let's get. All right, I'm going to try to catch up here. Now, can you all see my slides and can you all hear me? Somebody say yes. 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 All right. Um, I don't know how to make minimize the the script that's on my whoops the screen there. That's uh, uh darn. Okay, so. We're running behind already, so I will blast through this. First of all, I want to say, I want to thank the organization for inviting me and sending me a, a, a shirt, which doesn't show up on the screen very well, but that's, uh, I'm not wearing it because I usually like some bow ties, so that's me. Uh, I am an academic um, and I spent a lot of time doing research. So I have a few key themes of topics. I'm going to talk about strategies to find information that you can trust uh, on, uh, uh, what that's up to date by I me, mean, trustworthy, up to date, comprehensive, and authoritative. I want to talk about tricks to use in Google, a warning signs of an unreliable site, and things to consider when conducting searches, and uh, PubMed, and how to get access to pub medical papers and the authors of papers and some case studies. So I've got about, about six key points. We, you need to know when and how to use Google versus Google Scholar. So Google Scholar is a special subset of Google. Anybody can reach it and it is the academic papers. So if you want to know something about, uh, has anybody published on, on um, uh, asparagus and prostate cancer, you can go to Google Scholar, put up asparagus and prostate cancer, and uh, it, will look, it will get you the academic papers, not just anything that someone might have mentioned by the academic papers. All right, you need to know when to use quotes. Using prostate cancer as an example, about five years ago I did this, but I could update it. If you put the words prostate cancer in, Without quotes, you're going to get 29, you back then I got 29 million hits. If you put prostate cancer in quotes, then it looks for not the two words separately, prostate and cancer. It looks for those two words in combination. So if you have, you're looking for androgen deprivation therapy and you, you put in the three words separately, it's not the same thing as putting quotes around androgen deprivation therapy. And uh, this is an example, prostate cancer treatments get you 9 million hits. But if you put it in quotes, prostate cancer uh, um treatments cuts that by a third. So using quotes is a powerful tool. Using quote marks cuts the number of hits to a 30th of those required using just three words, prostate cancer treatments. Start with long strings of words. So if I'm trying to find out in my area of interest is hormonal therapy or androgen deprivation therapy, I say, I try to think of all the words that might be related, cancer, prostate, hormone therapy, testosterone, side effects, treatments, hot flashes, right? I could, that's a lot of words, but I try a long, long string. Okay, Those 10 words still get you 1.35 million hits. However, and this is interesting, if you start with a long string, you might get the, what you're really after. And indeed, it got to a site called Prostate Cancer UK, which is, um, I consider outside of Canada, the best national support prostate cancer organization in the world. Um, they are fantastic. So here you go. We took a long, long string. You don't pick one word. You take a long string. And if you do it right, and that's Prostate Cancer UK, it is very credible. So starting with long strings. Moving on, 
the next six hits I got on that search, and I'll run them through, it was www.cancer.net. That is the American Society of Clinical Oncology. That's ASCO is the top research organization of clinical research in the world. So that's reliable. Next one is uh, www.cancer.gov. And that's the National Cancer Institute in the US USA. So just by starting with a huge long string of every word I could think of. Now, if you start a huge long string and you get nothing, then you have to drop words out, but keep on going. And the next one, this is all the top six I got out of that, like, you know, whatever it was, 100,000. The next one was American Cancer Society. The next one was the Mayo Clinic in the US. The next one was a Health Union LLC, which is a um, an organization, uh, not a not a, a, a corporate organization, but nevertheless very credible. And lastly, University of California, San Francisco. So there you go. Use quotes, use Google Scholar, and uh, use long strings. All six that I got for my first hit on those long strings. One is commercial. That's uh, but all the others are not, and they all of them are nevertheless credible. Now the next thing, point four. Who is sponsoring the site? So what we call the extension at the end of, an, of a uh, URL, that's a universal locator for a, a, essentially an internet address, tells you what type of organization it is. So if it ends with a .com, it's a commercial organization. They're probably trying to sell something. If it ends with .edu, it is a US educational institution. So that could be University of California, could be Harvard, it could be uh, uh, New York University, whatever but it will be an educational institution and usually reliable. Net are for a network in inter infrastructure. It's unusual thing to pull it up occasionally. If you do a search on something leading to a background, a, a bogus site that's using a, a front, uh, sometimes you hit a net extension and they suggest that something's a little odd um, and not typically reliable. .org is originally for non-commercial organizations. It's now not as restricted, but typically the com is commercial a little suspicious edu reliable dot org reliable and if you haven't run into this before dot xxx is indeed pornography um, and if that's what you're looking for then then look for the xxx extension other things to consider check the ards ads in the margins note that organizations can pay to be pushed pushed high up or positioned high up in google so sometimes commercial stuff will show up in the margins or you can spot that but it will say dot com typically but well-visited sites come up early too. So that's how you get the Prostate Cancer UK, the uh, ASCO, uh, and NIH, and so forth. They will come up early on a good long search. And then this is a really important one, read the disclaimers. So often sites will go through pages and pages and pages. And if you're not sure it's reliable or not, go right to the bottom and uh, look at what it says at the very bottom. Because if they're marketing something, but they don't want to get caught in a legal battle, they're going to say, well, you know, we're not really helping you. Uh, you're, this is just for educational purposes. This isn't really cancer advice, even though everything for the pages before may have been ads for their organization. Chase down in Google Scholar is the authorities of name sources. So often the patients say, how do I find out about this? And if it's a paper that you pulled up uh, and it has authors, there are ways of finding the names of the authors and writing them. Suppose the two sites have dis disagree about, disagreements on their recommendation. So you dig up and you see, See if you can find a date when the site was last updated. So I've seen sites that sounded so authoritative, but they were eight or 10 years out of date, all right? So you look for a date on there and you can usually find one. Find out what MDs and PhDs. So we're looking at an organization like Prostate Cancer uh, UK. You can go to their directory of uh, who are the, who's on their board. Who, is, who are the managers of the organization? Who are the funders and so forth? And usually organizations.orgs um, will have that information. And if you're looking for reliable information on prostate cancer, you would expect to have a lot of, or at least some researchers and MD, PhD scientists who work in prostate cancer. So research their board, find out how many really credible, you know, authorities they have backing them up. And that's one way of, again, assessing their reliability and use that information to decide who to trust. So I'm blasting through this quickly because we're, so here's some warning font signs about things not to trust. There are some words that are soft, sound right, but don't have a lot of authority behind them. They're not part of what we call evidence-based medicine. The words holistic, natural, and herbal are always scare me. Patients should understand that, that real medicine that's done by randomized controlled trials, that is real well-designed research, is the backbone for evidence-based medicine. 
So if you want to know is it reliable or not, and they tell you we offer you a holistic natural herbal cure, that's not the thing as saying is here's some references. These were randomized controlled trials. I'll tell you more about where you can test whether they where to find those randomized controlled trial studies. Okay, say so the uh, ones that use those words should be realist. One should be realistic about uh, whether uh, we're talking about holistic medicine, alternative medicine, or naturopathy. And that's going to be less reliable than evidence-based medicine because evidence-based medicine depends on research backing it. The evidence comes from the research. So I'll mention something here. There's a wonderful um, little YouTube video called Storm. And it's a little it's a, uh, hip hop poem by this, um, science, uh, this comedian who loves science. And he talks about, he gets into a conversation with someone and gets flipped out because they're endorsing uh, alternative medicine. And Mention says evidence-based medicine is, is medicine that has either not been proven to work or medicine has been proven not to work. Alternative medicine that has been proven to work is simply called medicine. So alternative, natural, herbal, holistic, all those things are things to be suspicious about. Be suspicious of sites with testimonials. Now, that's not necessarily true if you're just trying to buy a rug, a household appliance, or you know, pick a restaurant. But when coming to cancer, it does matter whether we're looking for testimonials. When it comes to cancer treatments that have not been proven effective in randomized clinical trials, those RCTs, testimonials, testimonials should be treated with suspicion because they will be biased. Simply stated, cancer patients who tried the treatment and it didn't work typically aren't around to provide testimonials. So that's a little glib, uh, but it is, it's, it is a situation. That is, if we're dealing with things that could, could affect our life and death, and someone says, I thought this was a wonderful herbal med medicine. I felt so much better. We don't know how many people took it and didn't survive to post a testimonial. If the site includes video clips and background music, if they are flashy, they are even more suspect. Okay, so this is I, I put a slam against these words like holistic, natural, herbal, cancer. So I, I ran it to try it out. I put those words in to a site and I got this one, cancerresearchawareness.com. Well, Com says it's commercial, but is it really? What is it? And if you go to the front of the site, it says, we searched and compared Mexican cancer clinics for nine years to locate what we feel is the best of the best natural alternative cancer clinics in the world. And it's found in Tijuana, Mexico. Now it goes on and on with pages, with testimonials. But if you get to the very bottom, the small print, after they're trying to get you down to their clinic uh, in Mexico, if you check out the small print disclaimer, it says in quotes, because they have to do this legally to keep out of trouble, this site does not provide medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. After you've read all those pages, where it's trying to tell you that it's found the best of the best of, the, of a cancer treatment. So be suspicious of those words and scroll to the bottom, because that's where you're going to find the legal protection from whatever they're trying to push. push. Okay, know how to use PubMed. So PubMed is, has this website. And it is the, the National Library of Medicine at the National Institute of Health in the USA. And it will post the abstracts for papers that are from the evidence-based medicine from those clinical trials. And, and you can get them there and anybody can access it. So this is, if you want to, if you have a, a question about, a, as I said, example, asparagus and prostate cancer, you could put it in I, and you will get the hits, all of the evidence-based papers. And typically the abstracts are readable. PubMed comprises more than 34 million citations for biomedical literature from Medline, Life Science Journals, and online books. Citations may be including, include, they might include links to the full papers, uh, which can be then accessed through PubMed Central. That is, you, often you can get the papers, the whole papers for free. Okay, a few more tips. The medical literature on cancer is so voluminous and the field is changing so fast that one should not expect family physicians to keep up with it. So you often, I've heard a patient complain, my doctor didn't even know about this. Well, the doctors are trying to treat all sorts of illnesses. They're all overloaded and you can't expect them to have the time to both treat you and read literature at the rate that it's coming out. And more and more us patients are doing the research ourselves. So again, I'm talking now to help you come up with ways to do this research. Some of the medical literature, literature uh, uh, is actually written by drug companies who then get MDs to co-author their papers. So now we have a concern. So you can look into a paper, you can look at who they acknowledge and look if you see if the drug companies are acknowledged for actually helping or being authoring the papers. Even the best websites that are not-for-profit um, and are committed to helping patients may not be comprehensive and up-to-date. So also look at the dates and you can often scroll and find a date when they last updated the site. 
and good papers, good data peer and peer reviewed publications. So when someone says, I don't know where to find information, I went on Google, I want to know, did you go to Google Scholar, which gets you the academic papers in general? Did you go to PubMed, which gets you the medical academic papers? Because that's where you want to go to get reliable information. All right, peer reviewed means that experts really read the paper. Now there's flaws in the system, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than having a commercial people sort of sound, trying to write something that looks scientific in order to get your money for their herbal mix. Research papers listed in PubMed are typically peer reviewed. For journals to be listed there, they have to meet that and other rigorous standards. So PubMed is a source of reliable information typically. In contrast, most books on cancer are not peer reviewed. So typically people think, wow, this book is huge. That paper is only five pages long. But if it's a huge book, doesn't mean it's reliable. It wasn't necessarily peer reviewed. A book may look more authoritative because of its size, but quantity, that is the size of a document, does not necessarily reflect quality or reliability. Okay, so final comments. Many booklets and pamphlets given out by doc doctor's offices, offices and cancer clinics are drug company products presented as educational materials. That is not necessarily bad. It depends on what they write and who wrote it. And many nonprofit organizations, and I'll admit that we run a national androgen deprivation therapy educational program and PC. Uh, uh, PCFBC, uh, who's supported, sponsoring this talk itself. We are both uh, supported by industry, but you notice we're not advertising. Them. I mean, that is, we're not, we, we're not pushing their products because they legally in Canada can't support us if we are pushing their products. We have real ethical boundaries on that. Um, but so it isn't necessarily always bad uh, that we get uh, pharmaceutical and industrial support. It is bad if they're writing the papers and hiding it. In conclusion, trust PubMed in general. Trust Wikipedia, by the way. This is another thing that's fascinating. Someone said, I read about this drug. I don't know anything about it. Check it out on Wikipedia. It's usually in common English, accessible. That's a good starting point. Wikipedia is a pretty darn good uh, encyclopedia. Uh, but be suspicious of treatments that don't have a good track record in the medical literature, i.e. are not listed in PubMed. A few more tips. Books are big and solid and may thus seem more substantial and credible in websites, but they're not peer-reviewed. Consider suggestions offered by other patients or prostate cancer chat groups as suspicious, even though we're talking about it here today. It can be suspicious if people post them and can't provide citations. So I, I participate in a lot of chat groups online about it when someone's pushing, it, pushing a, uh, a product, a herbal mix, and they won't give you their name, they don't give you a citation, I get, I get suspicious. And lastly, if you want to know about the latest treatments that are under investigation, the ones that haven't been published yet because they're still active, you can go to a site called clinicaltrials.gov. It's a little awkward uh, search engine, but it gets you to every, the thousands, the tens of thousands of clinical trials, not all in cancer, but all over the place. Clinicaltrials.gov lists clinical trials around the world. Uh, so it's a place if you've got a, an odd situation, you want to know, is there a clinical trial? That's reliable. Clinicaltrials.gov is a place to go. And I think to Ro Rochelle and Meyer, I think I put you back on time. I don't know if I have time to questions or answers, uh, but I post my uh, email address. I may be shooting myself broadly for this, uh, but if someone says, I, I read this, is this reliable? I might say, I'll try and investigate it for you. But if nothing else, I would like you to, to at least try Google Scholar, PubMed, uh, and uh, um, as starting points. Uh, thank you very much. I'll stop there. Thank you, Richard. That was great. It's, it's so hard to find vetted information, and I think that's just fantastic.